my wife's making some stuffed cabbage rolls, so I just thought I'd make a quick video here to share with you guys. Um, we started off, uh, geez, about a week ago, we went down to the public market to pick up cabbages to uh, make our sauerkraut with. Um, they're a little more expensive this year. I got six nice big cabbages for, uh, it was eight bucks. They were three for four dollars, so... You know, get them home, and um, before I make the sauerkraut, my wife likes to take have me take the outer leaves off of them, and she uses them to make stuffed cabbage leaves with. So, you know, basically, I, you know, first thing you do is you wash them off, and then I uh, take and peel off all the, you know, the, the outside leaves that are really no good to eat. They've got markings on them, and you know, bug bites and stuff like that, and get down to the good clean leaves. So this, uh, you know, it takes a couple seconds to do, and they, they peel right apart. Um, the cabbages this year are just really uh, so sweet and uh, crispy. It's like, you um, have to be careful touching the leaves because they just pop apart. They're so crispy. But there they are. You know, the outer leaves are cleaned off, and I'm ready to try and, you know, get some good pieces off of them for the cabbage rolls. So I usually start by just taking the um, the spline of one of the exposed leaves there and I split it down the spline um, be careful not to cut too deep so you cut into the next leaf down and then just try to peel them off the cabbage in one piece as much as you can um, it's really not an easy job this year because everything is so crispy that uh, any little bends and they just snap but you know if you work at it a little bit you'll You'll get them, and you know you might get a couple little cracks in them and stuff. But you know, as you go along, you get some real good ones, and you'll get some that aren't quite so nice. But you know, just take your time and just um, try to work the pieces out one at a time, generally. And I always peel a, um, you know, I peel extras of them because I know there's going to be some that just aren't going to make it. But these outer leaves are really um, great for stuffing. They, uh, they, you know, they're nice and thick, and right now they're real crispy and everything. But um, they are very tasty too. So, you know, here it is, just peeling some of the um, the outer leaves off, and I I took the outer leaves off of uh, six of the cabbages I was making sauerkraut out of. So, you know, it didn't it didn't take too long and you know, this is what it looks like after I've had two cups of coffee. I can go pretty fast. No, just kidding. But um you know, we we take them off and then what we do is we just um we put them in the uh fridge in a ba plastic bag for a couple of days until she got around to making uh the cabbage roll. So, they will stay good for like up to a week after you take them off. So I took them off and then I just shredded the rest of the cabbage up. In the meantime, she started some uh, rice in her rice cooker and um, got out two cups of cooked rice. And you can see it's her first snowstorm. It's seven degree wind chill out there. I got my little tractor out. I'm waiting for a tractor trailer with my a package for me. And, you know, then we, uh, my wife finally, she got around to making the cabbage rolls and, you know, she's kind of trimming up anything that I left on that um, I didn't trim properly, any of the splines or, you know, any loose pieces or anything, just to, to get them out of the way. So, um, you know, she won't use all of the leaves by the time she's done, but she will use the best ones that, you know, stay together good. So, you know, you get them cleaned up, and then you just have to... Um, Rinse them off good in case there's any spray or anything on them. And just let them drain for a little while in the colander. And then in the meantime, she um, gets out a big cooking onion. And she's uh, basically going to use half of the onion. Um, just going to chop it up to some big pieces there to, um, to make it easier to put in the blender. And then we recently got her this nice little food chopper at um costco that she likes to use now and she'll just throw it in there and um turn the machine on for just just takes a couple seconds to um you know to chop an onion up pretty good like that so she just hits a button a couple times and uh there you have it a half a chopped onion ready to go so she'll um you know put that in a bowl that she's going to mix everything up in and uh, you know it does it does save a lot of time instead of trying to chop it by hand. 
and then she'll take a little measuring cup, put one egg in, and um, you know, approximately a half a cup of milk, a little more, a little less, doesn't really matter, she says. And then, um, you know, whip that up a little bit, get the egg mixed in good, and then go back and just throw in a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, a couple drops of that. That's just for some flavor, and then, you know, put some salt and pepper in there. Maybe a little extra pepper. And, uh, you know, in the meantime, she's got a big frying pan, covered frying pan, that's boiling up with a little bit of water in it to steam the cabbage leaves. And she'll just take uh, about four of those uh, nice big leaves and set them in the pan there. Um, you don't want to put too many in because they won't steam up right. So you just... Uh, Put them in the pan, put the top on, make sure it's boiling pretty good. And then uh, we set the timer for three minutes and just let them, you know, steam for three minutes. And, you know, then she dumps the egg and milk in the, the bowl there with the onion. And um, and next thing is a one pound of uh, chopped beef. Um, we really like the chopped beef from Costco. We've had really good luck with it and has a really great flavor. Um so we, you know, we buy big packs of that. We break it up into one pound packages and we just freeze it. And it actually does stay good and retains the flavor and everything using those uh, sealer bags. So now she'll start mixing that in with everything and then dump in the two cups of rice that were previously cooked. And just, you know, you just have to try to, to mix it all together and get it kind of an even mixture throughout as you're going um, and you know in the meantime she's got those cabbage leaves that are steaming three minutes are up and it's time to take the first batch out so you just uh, you know just remove them a couple forks takes them out without damaging them usually and then just put them in a colander to drain because they're really too hot yet to um, have to let them cool for a while before you can do anything with them so she take that batch out and then, you know, just put in another batch and get them going and set the timer again. And I think it took took about four batches or five batches till she got them all done. And then she, you know, mixing this mixture up, she she got to the point where she said it just didn't have enough egg in it. It needed a, um, a little more binder. So she just threw in another egg uh, to, to bind everything up and make it stick together a little bit better. And, um, you know, here you can see she's kind of got everything mixed up real good now and ready to go. It's really a pretty quick and easy meal to make, you know, if you've previously taken the leaves off the cabbage and, um, you know, have some rice that's previously been cooked up. Um, and here we use our homemade tomato puree that uh, to pour it on top of it. So, you know, now it's time for to start the assembly on these rolls and... And that's a really easy job. She just puts a scoop of the, the meat mixture, meat and rice mixture in, the, in a uh, one of the cabbage leaves. And you can pretty much see how nice and soft they are now after steaming them. And you really uh, have to let them cool before you start handling them too because they just can be, you know, so hot from being steamed that you could get bit, burned real bad. So let them cool for a while and then just start, you know, rolling them up like this doesn't take long you know once you get the first couple going they they just got a little bit easier with each one and pretty soon before you know it you'll have a um a bowl full of the you know rolled cabbage leaves and you know this is really the only time of the year when you can get um you know make these and get real good tasty cabbage leaves uh, when they're fresh picked and they're sweet, once the cabbages go into storage, they just, um, you know, they basically start drying out from the um, the outside in just about, and um, they just they just don't taste the same. The leaves just don't have the same flavor, and they just don't have the same texture. So you know, here she is. She's kind of finishing up the last batches of steaming the uh, steaming of all the leaves and. Like I said, she picked out the, the better looking leaves that were, you know, a little bit larger and a little bit better shape. And she's just been using them for the for the roll-ups. 
Uh, once a bowl is all full, she'll just, if there's any meat left over, she'll just take it and spread it on top of the, um, you know, the rest of the roll there and just let it cook up there when it's in the oven. And then she'll take our, our tomato puree that we make. And this is all made from like dark tomatoes, uh, the puree and the juice of them. And it's just unbelievable flavor it has. So we like to use this on them. Um, and she'll just pour some of that on them before baking. Lucky we, you know, have some tomato products left over from last year because we lost all our tomatoes this year, as you've probably seen in my videos. And uh, it's about this time the truck pulled up with my uh, brand new snowblower in it, and I unloaded that. And this is going to be to replace my 53-year-old one that I had. And then a little later, she um, sets the oven to 350, puts it in there, and bakes it for one and a quarter hours. And here's basically what they look like when they're done. And um, it's just unbelievable the flavor that the tomato juice actually adds to them. And they're, they're really a great hearty meal. I really like them. And, you know, as a bonus from this meal, I have two uh, crocs here of sauerkraut starting to ferment up and give it another week or two and that'll be ready to start canning up so you know there's basically no waste from the cabbages and um you know it's a real hearty meal i feel and i just thought i'd you know share this with everybody just in case someone else out there is interested in trying them thanks for watching please subscribe